Welcome to Pure Math 030. This is going to be a review of quadratic functions and equations. And quadratic equations are going to be a form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Always set equal to 0, always degree 2. And there are four methods to solve these quadratic equations, one of which we won't be looking at particularly. This is an important one, though factoring. I'm going to do lots of these. And factoring doesn't work for everything, but I'll make a note here that it is a good place to start. And it's the things in uh, the questions in Math 30 Pure tend to be factorable. Not all, but most. And they tend to be fairly simple, factorable ones. So my advice would be to always try to factor first. Many of you won't pay attention to that, but it's, it's a good idea. It's quicker. The second one, completing the square, um, not recommended for those of you who recall your Math 20 Pure, you'll know you did lots of these ones, but um, I'm not going to look at them at all in this course. Quadratic formula is important, and it is provided on your formula sheet. It's also in your workbook. You might have it memorized, but here it is in case, in case you have not. It's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a based on that ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So very useful. It works for every quadratic there is. Although um, it's not necessary for the simple ones. There are times you must do it. The fourth is graphing, and I'll be looking at this in quite a bit of detail. It's a good method to solve lots of them and a great way to check your answers, and there's times you will definitely want to use this. This lesson, however, I'm going to be just reviewing factoring. Some of you might have a different way of doing it than I do, um, and that's okay. You won't be marked on how you factor. It's just whether you get the answer right. So if this looks different and you have another method that works, there's sort of two main methods, stick with what you have. I do happen to think the way I do it is the best, but it isn't a big deal. A lot of you will look at this one and get the answer, but what I'll do is that for my trial and error method, I break down the first and the last term. And x squared must be, we're looking for two factors that multiply to be x squared, so it has to be x times x. And then 24 could be 8 and 3, 2 and 12, 1 and 24, but I think um, a reasonable place to start at least is 4 and 6. 4 times 6 is 24. And if you're looking ahead, you'll see that those do add up to 10. And that's the idea. We want it to add up to the middle term. Now, I am assuming that everybody has done this sort of thing before. But I use this type of cross method where I'll cross, in a, in, in a sense, cross multiply. I'll go x times positive 6 is pos positive 6x. And then cross again the other two, x times positive 4 is 4x. And then when I add those two together, the oi part of foil, if you like, it gives me 10x, which is um, what we want it to be. And then the answer I'll write up here, x plus 4, x plus 6 is equal to 0. And now we have it factored, broken down into two linear expressions. And I'm going to go through about eight or nine of these examples. Here's the next one. It's very similar, except we have this negative term. So x squared must break into x times x. And then with a 16, 
lots of choices, or several choices, but 8 and 2 is where I'm going to start. We have to note that one of them is going to be negative, if they're going to multiply to be negative 16. So we have to choose, and many of you, if not all, will look at this and choose the negative 8, make the 8 negative and the 2 positive. And it won't be necessary to cross and check, but if you did, x times positive 2 gives you positive 2x. And then x times negative 8 will give you negative 8x. And then when you add the two together, you get negative 6x. And that means that in factored form, this is x minus 8 times x plus 2. And we now have it broken down into our two linear factors. And I forgot on the previous question to actually answer the question. To solve, I think there was a question for this, but you do now have to take the two linear terms, set them to 0, so x minus 8 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. And we solve, and we should get two answers, because a quadratic should always produce two answers. And this first one is x is equal to 8, or x is equal to negative 2. We could try another one. This one's a little more complicated. Negative 4x squared plus 20x plus 56. And we have leading term, a leading term of negative 4. I notice that there's a that 4 goes into each of those terms. So I'm going to divide out each term by negative 4. So the get rid of the greatest common factor. And I'm going to do something here that might surprise you. I'm going to divide all the terms by negative 4, including the 0 on the other side. And as long as you divide each term on both sides of the equation, then you eliminate that factor completely. And you wouldn't do that with a variable, but it's okay to do it with a numeric term. And of course we end up with a much simpler expression. You should always look for common factors when you're solving these type of questions. It just makes the math much easier. And then this one factors quite nicely. I think most of you will be able to do these by inspection, ones like this. So x minus 7, x plus 2 is correct. That does add up to negative 5. And then x minus 7 times x plus 2 is the factored form of this polynomial, giving us x is equal to, or x minus 7 is equal to 0, excuse me, x plus 2 equal to 0. And I'll bring up a new screen for this one so I can express, solve for the two answers. So x would be equal to 7 and negative 2, or negative 2. Notice how I'm writing this one uh, in, uh, as a solution set, which is acceptable as well. Not necessary, but many of you have done that sort of thing before. Let's take a look at another one. Now, unfortunately, here we cannot take out a common factor. So we're going to have to break down that 2x squared, which um, creates a few extra possibilities. And these ones are tough to do by inspection. They usually require a little bit of uh, play. So 2x squared must break into 2x and x. We don't know where the 2x goes, however, relative to the other term. So the 2 would break into 1 times 2, or the reverse. But I'm trying it like this to see if this produces the positive 5 in the middle. Everybody's positive. And then I'm going to carefully cross and check. So 2x times positive 2 and x times positive 1. So, so 2x times positive 2 is positive 4x. x times positive 1 is positive 1x. And that gives us positive 5x. We did it. So this will factor into 
x plus 2. Of course, equal to 0. And set each one to 0 now, and then solve. This gets a little tiresome as well, so many of you will go directly to the answer. Do not make mistakes with it, though. That's the key. So x is equal to negative 1 half x equal to negative 2. Let's try another one like this, a little more complicated yet. 3x squared plus x is equal to 4. And This is a reminder to everybody that for quadratics everything needs to be taken to one side. So that 4 needs to be subtracted from both sides and brought over to the left. So 3x squared plus x minus 4 equals, equals 0. Here we have possibilities of 3x squared um, and the 4, of course, too, breaking into 3x and x. And then the 4 could be 4 and 1, or it could be 2 and 2. Now here I'm going to try 2 and 2. I'm going to play a little dumb with this one. And I now look at this, and I'm getting worried. Because when I cross, even though one of them is negative, it doesn't look like I'm going to get an answer that's going to work for me. So try again. And this time, instead of 2 and 2, try 4 and 1. So I'll bring up a new screen to do that, get a little bit of space. Now this will happen. Many of you will not make it as deep into the equation as I did before you realize you're going the wrong direction. But um, it's pretty normal to have a couple false steps along the way. And I know everybody knows that. You would have covered this before. You would have done lots of these. So I'll try 4 and 1 with the positive 4 and the negative 1. I have a good feeling about this one. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. Then x times positive 4 is positive 4x. And this gives me positive 1x. So I've got my I've got my answer. This one's going to factor into 3x plus 4 and then x minus 1. Set them to 0 and solve away. So 3x plus 4 is equal to 0, giving us x, I'm going to go right to the answer, is negative 4 over 3. Here, x minus 1 is equal to 0, producing an answer x equal to 1. There are our two answers. Try, try another one. This one is quite complicated, actually beyond what you'll see in 30 pure most of the time, but it, you would have done many of these in earlier courses. So 6x squared could break into 1 and 6. It could break into 2 and 3. And most of the time, people start in the middle, 3x and 2x. And then 10, well, 10 and 1, maybe, or 5 and 2. You can always pause this and do it yourself and check answers. But 5 and 2, or 2 and 5, is going to work. And I've got the negative with the 5, positive with the 2. And I'm feeling good about this one. Because 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. And 2x times positive 2 is positive 4x. And when these get added together, we get negative 11x. So 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 5. And then when they're set to 0, 3x plus 2 is equal to 0, so x equal negative 2 over 3. And 2x minus 5 equals 0, x is equal to 5 over 2.
The next batch is going to be, uh, or will be fairly routine, just illustrating points, sort of special cases. x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. This is what is known as the difference of squares, or a difference of two perfect squares. And they factor really easily. So instead of doing all that work trying to break it down, we just note that this is going to factor into x plus 3 times x minus 3. So the square root of each of the two terms. And I'll write my answer like this. x is equal to plus or minus 3. So that's how those ones are done. Then this one, 2x squared plus 9x is equal to 0, a, a, another binomial. And it doesn't have a third term. The only way we can approach this one is to factor out an x. So take out a common factor. Now keep in mind you cannot divide each of the terms by x because it's a variable. And we would be losing a solution if we did that. We would be losing the x equals 0 solution. And you cannot divide by 0 anyways. So factor out the x and set each of those terms to 0. And you'll get x equal to 0 there. And then 2x plus 9 equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 9 over 2. And there we go. There are two solutions. So you always get that x equals 0 solution in those cases if there's no constant term. Let's try another one. This will be the final one and just another sort of thing to watch out for. We have fractions and as I'm sure most of you know that you can get rid of the fractions in an equation if you multiply all the terms by the least common denominator of 2 and 3 in this case, which is 6. So each term, including the 0 by 6, and then 6 times 1 half x squared will give you 3x squared, and then 6 times 1 third x is 2x, and that's equal to 0. And then take out a factor of x, and then that would be 3x plus 2. And that's equal to 0. Set each to 0, and we'll get the one solution x equals 0. And then 3x plus 2 equal to 0. So x is equal to negative 2 over 3. And there you have it. Two answers. So that is a review of factoring quadratics. The next lesson will be on using the quadratic formula. Thank you for your time.